on divorce court today. Drugs and alcohol have wrecked their marriage. Brittany claims that Eliza steals from their home, even takes money from their child's piggy bank to pay for his habit. And she has had enough. Brittany Ramos and Eliza Ramos have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court starts now. Mrs. Ramos, it's your claim that you wore the pants in this relationship. Why don't you explain that to me? Well, um, um, I feel like I've worn... Um, we're here today, actually, because um, this is basically the death of our, re, um, our marriage, basically. Um, well, this is a good place for marriages <laughs> to come to die. <laughs> exactly. So you're in the right spot. Exactly, perfect spot. But basically, um, while we were together, um, I worked full-time, went to school full-time, and then also take care of our three-year-old son that we have together. And uh, Mr. Ramos was supposed to be working, um, but when it came to us, him paying any bills around the household, um, there was never any money accounted for on his end, and I was all paying for all of the bills, and him nothing but excuses. Um, so, I mean, that, got, that gets tiring after a while, and, um, you know, after kicking him out several times and um, being nice about it, you know, nice. No, hang on, hang on, hang. Kick him and kicking him out a couple of times and being nice about it. Yes. <laughs> Explain how those two go together. Well, you know, I'm, I try to do things um, in a civil matter, so uh -huh. I would nicely pack his things in hefty bags and set them out for him to sweetly. get them sweetly, sweetly, nicely. <laughs> well, how often have you put him out? Um, maybe like three or four times. Three or four times that you packed his stuff up in hefty bags and put them on the corner. Yes. Mr. Ramos, is that what she does? Pack your stuff up in well, hefty exactly bags and put them on court? Well, not exactly how she's saying, Judge. Excuse me? Not exactly how she's well, saying exactly it. Well, exactly how is she doing it? Well, it's basically she'll get all the stuff and just throw it outside like it was That's basically nicely. nothing. <laughs> Do you think nicely is just throwing it outside without putting it at least in a baggage or something? I, I said a hefty bag, and they're durable. Oh, uh, okay, if you say so. Now, 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 now Mr. Ramos, so. is it in a hefty bag or not? Is she just throwing them out the window? Just throw them on out. And what do you argue about? Basically, bills, money. Basically, more about money and being, well, basically, she's jealous about every single thing. She's jealous? Yeah, she's a jealous woman. Are you jealous? No, not at all. Do you, do you trust him? I do trust him, but he has given me reasons not to trust him. Um, I'm not jealous at all, but the fact that I um, was okay with him talking with his ex-girlfriend, that's not jealous at all. But the fact that when I seen a message from her saying, hey, baby, and all this other stuff, then yes, I'm, I'm going to, that's... Did, did you see any replies Ms. to that? Mr. 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 Red, don't talk to her. You're talking to me. <laughs> did you have text messages from an ex that said, hey, baby? Yes, I did. Okay. And what did you do in response to those? Didn't reply back to their message. Okay. Now, here's the rule on unwelcome texts from an ex. You got to put them in check. You got to say that's not appropriate because otherwise it's disrespectful to the person that you're with. That's just a general rule, okay? So, so, so we're clear on that. Other than the text messages, however, though, Ms. Ramos, he's been a pretty good guy, yes. though, hasn't he? Yes, he has. And you're um, mad about the money. That's really at the end of it. At the end of it, that's really the biggest issue in our marriage was just the money situation um, and just fighting over money. And you know, it gets tiring. I'm taking care of everything. For instance, let me give you an example. Um, we were we moved into a house uh -huh. together, and um, we had things that needed to be fixed, floors, and we were trying to remodel. Mr. Ramos was over at his friend's house fixing his roof instead of fixing the things that need to be done in our house. And like I told him, I'm like, I'm okay with you hanging out with your friends. I don't give, you know, I'm like, have fun, go do that. But you need to make sure your house is taken care of first before you do, that's extra. Mr. Ramos, basically, she's telling me she feels like you're just, like, living at the house as opposed to contributing in any way, shape, or form economically or with, with help or handiwork. Well, what, what's your response to that well, allegation? Well, basically, Your Honor, I was working in the house, and basically every material that were in the house were basically put up. Everything was taken care of in the house. If I'm going to get a little bit of cash money in the outside, even if it's my friend, he's still paying me for doing the job. Okay. And she got mad because I was at least getting a little bit of cash on the side. So it was, it was a, a side job that you were exactly. doing, trying it was to a pull friend, some cash into the house. It was a friend, but it, I was still getting paid you for You were still it. getting paid. Exactly. It wasn't going into the house. Well, Ms. Ramos, <laughs> you say it's a little more than just bills. You're saying that he steals stuff out of the house, sells them to buy drugs. Yes, um, 
Yes. Uh oh. Yes, he he did. Um, basically, it was around my birthday last year, and we went out with my friends, and he said he needed to go home to change and get ready and shower and all that. It was taking him a long time from where we were at. Um, when we got back home, there were things missing. My son's TV, um, it was like our wedding rings as well. It was just a lot of personal things, the easily pawnable things that were not. Why do you think he was, was going towards drug use? Because he eventually told me that he was doing drugs. Did that happen, Mr. Ramos? I told her that I was smoking. Uh-huh. I did never steal nothing from my son. I have never steal anything from my son. And what she's telling right now, it's a lie. Mm -hmm. Because she knew that I had to go home and take a shower so that I could go out with her and her sister and a friend of hers that were basically waiting on another place. Well, Mr. Mr. Ramos, we could, we could argue about this back and forth. Yes, but I, I would just say, in general, when you got somebody doing drugs in a house, Stuff turns up missing. That's uh, just kind of how it works out. So you're trying to say that I did took them? I, I don't know. No, I'm just telling you, general, when when a person has well, a habit. And I'm saying that I'm not that type of person. And I get that. And I get that. But history is okay. Teaches history is history. Story. It's people is people. I, got, I, got, I understand. You. I got you. I I can't prove it one way or another. But I I've been up here for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ramos, your wife likes to call the police on you all the time? Every single true? time, but there's an argument. To explain that to me. Basically, if something's done in the house or not done in the house, job, money-wise, or whatever it is, it's not the, the way she wanted it to be, it's a problem. She'll start throwing stuff at me, and then when I really... <laughs> no, you got to be honest with that. You know, you start throwing a shoe or whatever you find, a book or knife right, or whatever you find. Not Ms. Ramos, go know, ahead. She will throw anything at me. Now, right. when I will tell her two or three times, hey respect me, stop throwing stuff at me, you know, uh -huh. and she sees that I get upset, no, she runs. So who's doing the calling, you or her? She's doing the calling. Next, how did Brittany and Eliza drag their child literally into the middle of their argument? Divorce isn't easy. If you need help with your breakup, call toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Couples in crisis, real resolution. Divorce Court continues. So you explain to me, Mrs. Ramos, under what circumstances you end up calling the police frequently. Um, he started drinking heavily, and um, so that would be the reason why the police were called and I've never just thrown something at him. It would be out of defense from him, Mr. Ramos, because I'm not even that type of person. Or Will anybody woman. ever get arrested? He got arrested. How often? He got arrested one time in particular, but the police has been, have been called several times because of Mr. Ramos's anger issues that he has. Mr. Mr. Ramos, she's painting you as a hothead. Now look deep in your heart. Are you a bit of a hothead? Is no, anger, I'm not. Anger is not an issue for you. I, well. I could take a couple of drinks with you and, you know, you'll see how the type of person I am. That request right there tells me a lot about who you are. For you to say that to a judge means, means a great deal well, about and I'm who sorry, you are. Judge. Okay. I'm really oh, sorry, Judge. Oh, you didn't offend me. I'm just hearing who you are. I'm just peeping your well, whole card. But you're just saying that I'm a, I'm a person that doesn't respect I'm or anything like that? I'm asking you. Well, and I'm saying that I'm not. When you drink, do you become aggressive? No. When she throws things at you, your response is to... Just leave it alone. No, oh, I don't believe that. <laughs> Nobody in here believes that, Mr. Ramos. Let me, let me Look, tell you... Judge... No, 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 tell me to hold up. I don't hold up for people. Mr. Ramos, let me explain something to you. You live in a high-volume household, and you're in the habit of hysteria. You get mad a lot, and you get mad hard, and you get mad ugly. I know that kind of mad. I see who you are, and you're so aggressive, you can't even hide it. Even when you lie about your aggression, it's aggressive. So I know you're aggressive, <laughs> you know? And until you decide and understand that you are aggressive and that that's dangerous to your kids and to the people that live in your household, then you're gonna be a danger to the kids and the people that you live in your household. And having said that, I will say this, because I am aware, the thing that really made me upset was about the literal tug of war the two of you got into with your child. 
And with I say literal, I don't mean it like everybody else says it, like really, really. I mean actually had the child and were both tugging on him. Could you explain that to me? Yes. Can I explain it? Certainly. Well, that night I had a couple of drinks. I came home. She's asleep, basically waiting on me to come home. I walked in through the house. I took a shower, didn't argue with her at all. I lay down on the sofa in the living room because she didn't want me to stay in the room. I was fine with that. And she came to the living room, like, asking me questions. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I got a couple of drinks. You know, let's talk about this in the morning. You already see how I am. So she took that an advantage. Like, okay, I already know you had a couple of drinks, so I'm just going to make you upset. She didn't respect that I told her, hey, let's talk in the morning. You know, it's already 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Your grandma's asleep in the other room, so let's just keep it calm. We'll talk in the morning. No big deal. You know? Now, how many drunks do you know come in the house and say, <laughs> hey, you. let's keep it Thank calm? Thank you. Come on. Can you get his when people straight? get drunk, they don't get reasonable. Well, <laughs> they, they, exactly. get uh, they get up, they get loud, they get ugly. That's what they do. Okay. I mean, you act like I've been, I was born last week. I know I look like it, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, Ms. Mr. Ramos, that's not true. It doesn't even make any sense. Well, uh, probably 80 or 90 percent of the people are like how you're saying that they are. Not, no, doesn't no, mean no, that 100 no, no. percent it, of the people are. Well, I got are. the woman who lives with you right here. Okay. Not anymore. Not anymore. Live. We used to live with you right here. So you're going to tell me what happened to the kid. You were reasonable and rational, drunk, 2 o'clock in the morning. She was sober and crazy. She came over to you and said, uh, where were you? What were you doing? And you very calmly responded that we ought to talk about this in the morning because you see that I am intoxicated. Then what happened? When divorce court continues, can Eliza deliver an excuse for his own drunk and unreasonable behavior in front of their child? Do you believe that Eliza has never cheated on Brittany with another woman? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. And then what happened? Oh, she left it alone for a mm -hmm. minute. She went into the room, but my son got up that night. He wanted to come to the living room with me. And I'm like, hey, let him come with me. You know, I'm not going to do anything to my son, and I have never hit my son like that, never in my life. Even if I'm drunk or whatever it is, intoxicated, how you wanted to put it like that, you know I have never touched my son like that. He wanted to go to the living room, and just because of her anger or whatever that she had, she didn't let my son come in. So my son's just screaming into the top of his lungs. Her, her grandmother's in the other room, and I'm like, hey, you know what, Brittany, just let him come with me. I'm not going to do anything to my son. That's my son right there. No, 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 you can't, she, he can't sleep with you. And I'm like, well, why not? And she's spanking my son in the other room, like, to get him quiet so that he could fall asleep with her. And I'm like, you don't got to spank him for that. Just let him come with me. I'll take care of it. My son wants to be with me. Let him be with me. I could calm him down and put him to sleep with me. That's not a big deal. So she holds my son. I'm trying to get him off of her hands. She gets upset. We kind of, like, get into it. My son is in the middle. She gets upset, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to go down through this. I left the house, and she calls the police. So I left for probably five or ten minutes. I come back to the house, and there's a police officer right there. They put me in jail for a, for a night. I got out the next day, but basically they couldn't do nothing because that was a family matter, and basically they just took me in for a night. Well, they can't do things when it's a family member. It's called domestic violence. Well, basically violence. just because there's we were a married. Law, there's a whole book of laws on that, but that's okay, Ms. Ramos. What is your version of that event? There as is... frightening as it sounds. Exactly. Um, basically, I just love to call the police for no reason, and it happens... I want to know what happened with the, with the baby that night. Okay, he was arguing with me about something. I don't remember what it was, but he wanted to take him. I'm like, he's sleep, leave him alone, let him be. And Mr. Ramos is getting irate and all this, and I have my son in my arms, and he's basically pulling him, like, no, Brittany, it's okay, you know, he's crying or whatever. Oh, that's what it was. He wanted to, um, he wanted to come in there with him, but he was drunk, and I didn't want him in there with him mm -hmm. because he doesn't have any reason. So I'm like, you need to sleep it off or whatever, and that's what it was. He was like, no, he's crying, he wants me. Just give him here. And I said, no, he's fine. Just, you know, give him here. He'll, he'll be okay. You need to sleep it off. You know, you... Can you understand that a mother wouldn't want to have their kid with someone who's intoxicated? I understand that. You understand that. Yes. But you didn't understand it that night. 
I have always understand that. Okay. And she knows. So I no, 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 no. You, you got to be better at it. If you if you're gonna tell me that something that doesn't make sense, if you're gonna lie to me, you got to be a little better at it. You can't just you can't just say that. It doesn't make any sense. You just told me that you got into a tug of war because you wanted you, your son or your child to sleep with your intoxicated self. My son wanted it to be with me in the living room. Hey, he wants to jump off the Empire State Building. You gonna let him? That's what kids do. You're the adult in the situation. You were inebriated. You were wrong. You should have let that go. And you are a hothead. Uh, you said something really silly in here, Ms. Ramos, and I just gotta ask you about it. You said, even though you're separated, he didn't call you on your anniversary and you're upset about it. Yeah. How much it, sense does it, that it make? It sounds real silly, but basically on our anniversary, he didn't, we were still, we weren't living together, but we were still trying to make things work as a husband. So on, on our anniversary, he didn't call. I didn't hear from him. The phone, our phone call conversations got shorter and shorter. So um, basically, I found out that he was talking with another woman. He had moved on. He, he was telling me that he wanted to work on our marriage. But he had actually moved on. He actually on. moved on with another I woman. I got it. I got it. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Tell me about the $4,000 you want me to award you for Mr. Ramos. Um, basically, um, I, his friend um, needed a car, his family, um, I knew of them, and they were in need, and she had children, so um, I basically said that I would help them get a vehicle, I put it in my name, and um, that his friend would, I have a contract here that his friend would make the payments. Could I see that, please? And, um, have you seen, seen a copy of this? Yes, I, I signed some of the okay. paperwork. Yeah, his friend, him and his friend both signed it. But um, basically saying that um, he would keep up with the payments, keep insurance on the vehicle. His friend did not keep the insurance, and it's under my name, so if he get in an accident, it's going to come under oh, me. He, right. So, yeah, so his, I had to repossess the vehicle. And because Mr. Ramos was stealing, because, stealing money from me, because he was doing drugs, which he just said that he wasn't doing, he was doing crack cocaine. And um, after he told me that, after he got out of jail, and um, so I end up losing the vehicle because I, he stole money out of my savings and out of my bank account. And um, actually, there's a story that goes along with that. Um, after he got out... Well, 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 hang on, hang on. How much money has been paid on this loan? Um, his friend has paid into, like, $6,000 on it. And so I owe the remaining... Or, no, I'm sorry, he has paid 2000 into it and I owe 6000 And you owe 6000 what do you have to say about this, Mr. Ramos? Well, Your Honor, um, at that time, I was going to do that for my friend. Um, it couldn't happen because I didn't have all the paperwork that I needed to get the car. I called Ms. Ramos over here and told her, hey, you know what? Um, you're going to get some money out of this if you want. My friend needs a car. If you need the money and you want the money, all he needs is a car. She was offered $300. She took the $300 and basically took out the car and put it under my, basically under her name for my friend to drive. This is, doesn't say that anybody owes you any money. It just doesn't. It says that you're going to put the car in your name as a subcontractor. You just can't do that kind of thing. And if you do have a cause of action, you have a cause of action against the friend. This doesn't legally obligate him to anything at all. Cut your losses on this one. Make sure he pays child support. Make sure he does what he's supposed to do uh, by seeing the child. But, but if you're not comfortable with his condition or something, when he sees the child, you make sure that the court knows about that as well. Mr. Ramos, you need to be a better person. You got to now put your finger down. Your time to speak is over. No matter who you're with, you're still going to be a hothead and a drug user. And if you're a hothead and a drug user, you're going to hurt somebody. And if you hurt somebody, you're going to go to prison. I would ask you, if you can't do anything for anybody else, if you're so selfish that you can't consider other people's needs or feelings, consider your own and decide you don't want to go to jail and stop being a hothead and a drug addict. Get into some kind of uh, treatment and care and take care of that business. I am so sorry. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so old. Brittany understands that she is responsible for the loan they made to get around the law and 
has moved on from this marriage. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.